Now that I have saved some money to build my dream home, I'm really confused about which estate company to approach. My friend had a bad experience with a particular estate agency after completing his payment and could not even get his title deed. This is serious. Thank you. My name is Oli. I'm from I'm a investment. I'm a set. Thank you. You know, I must say you came at a very right time. Really? I was thinking about houses. Great. What can your company offer me? EJ Investments can offer you a lot. We're unique in the market. Okay. We own our properties mm -hmm. and we ensure that they're developed with modern technologies. They're affordable and they're strategic locations. We don't just sell pieces of land, but we create settlements. What makes your company different from others? We're different from all real estate companies in the Gambia because what we have to offer is affordability, safety, and security. We ensure that you get a legal contract for when you pay your deposit. And within four weeks of paying your final settlement, we make sure you receive your title date. Four weeks? Four weeks. That's interesting. Yes. Now tell me, what real estate service you need? It's absolutely EJ, investment and real estate agency. First of all, I have to apologize for the slight delay. Due to circumstances beyond our control, all of us. But notwithstanding, it's better late than never. And we are very pleased that we have very good attendance for this very important meeting. But as usual in the Gambia, before we always start anything, we start with prayer. So I therefore call on everybody to pray in silence, not only for the success of this meeting, but above all, to enhance peace, security, and stability, not only of the Gambia, our motherland, but also peace and stability of the Ecosso region. On that note, I invite everybody to have a silent prayer for one minute. Thank you. Obrigado, merci. merci. Good morning, everyone. Like my brother rightly said, I also want to follow his step to recognize the presence of the high table. Uh, Madam Bintu Kesama is representing the office of the vice president, who is also the chairperson of the governing council. Bintu, you are welcome. Dr. Papetua Kalala is almost now a Gambian. Doctor's contribution to the socio-economic development in this country, I'm sure, has been recognized by everyone in this country. So on that note, Doctor, on behalf of the UN system, I want to recognize your presence and also acknowledge that you are here. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, the representative of the ECOWAS, who is also representing the ECOWAS president, uh, Madam Gefo, on behalf of the National Disaster Management Agency, I would like to recognize your presence and you are welcome. Mr. Usman Yabo has been the longest standing executive director of Tango. And he, even though he's, he said he wants to retire, we said you are not tired. So we still need your, 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 your intellectual input in the development of this country. So on behalf of the National Disaster Management Agency, you are welcome. Uh, Daryl Saxton, who this program has been funded by the European Commission. And on behalf of the National Disaster Management Agency, I would like to recognize your presence and give our highest regard to European Commission for funding this program. Thank you. Uh, Madam Wanja has just replaced the, 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 I think it's one of the newest, apart from the UN country that who just arrived in the country to continue to support the Gambia's development process. So on that note, Madam Wanda, I would like to recognize your presence and then you are welcome. Together with my brother, I am from Seattle and my governor is here. So you have to be careful. Governor, you are, you are welcome. And on that note, I would like to welcome everybody for attending this program. I am indeed delighted to be associated with this 
important workshop that seeks to formulate coordinated strategies and resource mobilization mechanisms for effective disaster management in the Gambia. This convergence has two main objectives, to highlight ways to improve the ways stakeholders in national disaster management system engage with each other in their partnership building and share decision making and to highlight issues and come up with recommended mechanisms and approaches for improved disaster management and response action in vulnerable communities. We hope that the forum will address these objectives by exploring four interrelated themes as follows. The role of actors outside of the mainstream national or international humanitarian systems, accountability to affected population, third, national disaster management system, and fourth, coordinating disaster preparedness at all levels of society in the Gambia. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in an increasingly urbanized world, the Gambia is facing an increasingly threat of both natural and man-made disasters. The country's geographic attribute and our socio-economic vulnerabilities are increasing. The risk of widespread casualties and other losses when disaster occur. The composition of the platform includes government department, ministries and agencies, civil society, organization, education and training institutions, the Gambia media and international humanitarian agencies in the UN system, ECOWAS, World Bank and African Development Bank. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, despite the creation of the national platform for disaster risk reduction, however, the disaster management system of the country is still experiencing serious challenges. In 2012, NDMA was transferred abruptly to the office of the president, which resulted in a sharp decline in performance of the agency. There was frequent and ex excessive bureaucracy and red tape, limited mandates and poor coordination capacities in the institution. When this was required, sometimes urgently meetings of governing council were few and far between decision making was slow and above all available resources were inadequate for mitigation and response planning, implementation and monitoring. These challenges outlined above reduced the influence of the National Disaster Management Agency significantly. Unfortunately, the agency was turned into a political tool for the government of the day and its effectiveness and efficiency was seriously compromised. If this situation must change in New Gambia, it is imperative to reverse the trend and we hope that the high-level consultative forum and training workshop will discuss these issues and recommend for improvement in the coordination framework and strategies of NDMA. The forum is expected to, among other, others, to propose potential solutions to the irregularities highlighted above, propose policy ideas to strengthen disaster management capacities in the Gambia and highlight operational activities and strategies needed for increased accountability and participation of relevant actors and stakeholders in, in, in the management system of the country. In this respect, it is essential in particular to consider the role of local communities, local authorities, civil society organizations and private sector along with increased regional and global cooperation initiatives in the country to secure greater financial support and transfer of technologies that can build national, regional and local capacities in disaster mitigation and management in this country. In this respect, the full engagement of institutions and stakeholders 
in aspects of risk reduction is needed, including strengthening of decision making, processes, implementation mechanism, disaster policy reforms, institutional restructuring, the integration of scientific knowledge and training and capacity building of specialist expertise with, will enable an integrated vision of disaster management for reducing loss of life, damage to properties, and environmental damage. As we engage you in this high-level consultative forum, I urge you to frankly and openly discuss the Gambia's experience and challenges associated with DRR and propose solutions for a paradigm shift towards a more effective disaster management regime in the country. On that note, I wish to thank you all and wish you for a successful deliberation. Thank you. The UN resident coordinator, our sister, who is the country representative of the WFP, our representative of the EU, other members of the diplomatic and consular corps, the law mayor or office of the law mayor of the Canopy municipality, our governor of the central region, river region, our local council authorities, other representatives of international organizations, Our executive director of Tango, representatives of the civil society organizations, distinguished participants, invited guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Please permit me on behalf of the president of the ECOWAS Commission, His Excellency Jean Claude Cassibro to express my sincere gratitude to the National Disaster Management Agency and its partners for organizing this three-day workshop on developing a national coordination framework for disaster risk management in the Gambia. I'm of the firm conviction that this workshop would be a good opportunity for all relevant stakeholders gathered here to discuss how to engage more effectively and efficiently in strengthening disaster management coordination in the Gambia. It is a fact that in West Africa, thousands of people have lost their lives and properties destroyed due to hazards, including floods, mudslide, the Ebola virus disease, pest invasion, deforestation, soil erosion, coastal wetlands de degradation, and wildland fire. These posts, these posts threats to the region's ability to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. However, the Sendai Framework for Disaster Management Reduction, with its seven targets for the prevention of disasters and reducing disaster losses, is essential to achieving the SDGs. In addition, increased incidence of disasters triggered by natural and man-made hazards over the last decades have resulted in high vulnerability of people in West Africa, culminating into social economic losses and consequent ripping effect of slowing down the process towards achieving sustainable peace, security, and development. These are further being exacerbated by the effects of climate change without the, within the context of development, rural urban migration, and impacts on the environment. So in order to curb this menace, all relevant stakeholders should put hands on deck to galvanize their efforts in order to ensure effective and efficient collaboration, coordination, and cooperation to achieve the desired goals. This will consequently prevent duplication of efforts and further facilitate optimal utilization of the limited available resources. It is noteworthy that significant steps have already been taken by relevant stakeholders at the national, regional, and global levels to minimize the, the, the dazzling efforts of disasters. Hence, the poor and most vulnerable, including women and girls, suffered dis disproportionately in disasters. So it is prudent for all stakeholders to put more effort into tackling disaster risks to create a safer and more sustainable region for us all. 
Disaster rate reduction is the only way to ensure that disasters do not derail sustainable goals and poverty alleviation. On a more positive note, over the last couple of years, ECOWAS has increasingly focused its attention on disaster issues in culminating the establishment of disaster risk reduction as an operational team. This has mainly been driven by efforts to fulfill its peace and security mandate, including the management of humanitarian outcomes of conflict. Articles 22 and 29 of the revised Treaty of ECOWAS underscores the relevance of strengthening existing institutions to manage natural calamities, provide food aid in the event of serious food shortages, and to establish early warning systems. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this junction, let me seize the opportunity to commend the efforts of the government of the Gambia and the National Disaster Risk Management Agency for operationalizing the ECOWAS policy on disaster risk reduction because and the national policy which is at variance with its international standards, with international standards, excuse me, can have serious implications for the conduct and realization of the disaster management goals and strategies. Mindful of the numerous challenges associated with disaster risk reduction, such as insufficient funds, limited human expertise on the disaster risk reduction, and weak national platforms, there is the urgent need to focus on reducing human suffering and the number of people affected. So in effect, this three-day workshop that has brought together all relevant stakeholders to discuss significant issues regarding disaster prevention and reduction is a giant step in the right direction. It is a fact that we will never achieve the ECOWAS Vision 2020, even though a new one is also being developed, the African Union Agenda 2063, and the United Nations Agenda 2030 for sustainable development if vulnerable countries are in constant struggle to rebuild and recover after disastrous events. Having said that, I wish to encourage all distinguished participants to engage themselves constructively so as to meaningfully contribute to the discussions in order to have a harmonized thought on the effective and efficient coordination of national disaster management in the Gambia. I wish you all a productive working sessions that will yield the desired impact for sustainable partnership and coordination to strengthen efforts targeted at disaster management, including preparedness, prevention, response, and recovery in the Gambia. Having said that, I wish you all very happy deliberations. And before I end, I just wanted to say that we all observed this morning. I thought to myself, I said, we are going to have this meeting and look at the storm that suddenly came. It's a reminder to us that we have a lot to think about. And I hope that will serve as an impetus as we move ahead to see what we come out of here with so that those issues or those situations that come up can be otherwise addressed. Thank you very much. Uh, the DPS from the Vice President's Office, Madam uh, Bintu Kasama, who is representing His Excellency the Vice President and Minister of Women's Affairs, uh, who is also the chairperson for the National Disaster Governing Council. Uh, I acknowledge the presence of uh, the director of the NDMA and other senior government officials here present. I acknowledge the presence of the executive, of Her Excellency the Ambassador uh, of ECOWAS uh, in the Gambia, Madame Gay Floor the presence of uh, the members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, um, Mr. Darrell Sexton, the representative from the European Union. Uh, let me acknowledge the presence of colleagues from the UN system, uh, my sister from uh, the, the WFP, the representative from WFP, Madam Wanja Karia, uh, who is newly arrived uh, a few weeks in the Gambia now. Um, I, I recognize the presence of uh, colleagues from the civil society organizations, um, the executive director of Tangle, members of the media, um, or oh, let me not forget uh, the honorable governor of CRR, uh, Mr. Barry, honorable, I acknowledge your presence. 
distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols duly and respectfully observed. I'm deeply honored um, to have this opportunity to speak on behalf of the United Nations system in the Gambia on this very important occasion of the workshop on strengthening national disaster management coordination in the Gambia. Uh, it is with great pride uh, that I acknowledge that the coordination apparatus of disaster management in the Gambia has changed from an ad hoc system to a more established practice with the conception of the National Disaster Management Agency as a corporate body with a common seal by an act of parliament in 2008 that clearly defined rules, practices, and a well-decentralized structure. These structures include the governing council as the highest policy and decision-making organ under the chair of the vice president and membership of cabinet ministers. The regional disaster management committees under the chair of regional governors and mayors, and district and village disaster management committees chaired by district chiefs and village heads, respectively. As we're all aware, the Gambia has been experiencing recurrent disasters, both from natural and man-made factors for over a number of years now. The intensity and frequency of these disasters have increased progressively, leading to floods and droughts, coupled with the increasing concerns about the lives and livelihoods of communities. These disasters have, such attracted, uh, have attracted such a lot of attention from both the government and development partners, because their recurrence and impacts are ever so magnified and increasingly pose threats to livelihoods and development, and ultimately, the achievement of the country's development objectives. For example, we have seen the impacts of floods and droughts on agricultural production, livestock, and on the malnutrition of our children, and an overall, on, an, on overall population health. The resulting negative impacts are numerous, and have grave consequences on vulnerable communities who don't have enough time to recover from one shock to the next. The overall consequence being the slowing down of social economic development. Therefore, the alignment and coordination of the various sectors, such as health, agriculture, and food security, and so on, focusing on a clear set of objectives and converging into the shared goal is absolutely crucial. The government of the Gambia and its people need to take advantage of the existing strong political commitments, enabling policies and budgetary frameworks, as well as the institutional arrangements for coordination and implementation of disaster risk management that would help to increase investments in sustainable agriculture, social protection, nutrition, education, and health. This workshop, therefore, seeks to raise national awareness about effective actions, policies, and practices being taken to reduce exposure to disaster risk at the community level, therefore contributing to improved livelihoods. This is a considerable challenge, which cannot be accomplished by one agency, but through coordination, cooperation, and collaboration by all stakeholders. I'm informed the specific objectives of this workshop are increased knowledge and understanding of disaster risk reduction as a development priority by key partners and political actors. Improved understanding of the regional disaster risk reduction situation and how national platforms can contribute to its advancement. And the third objective to analyze partner roles, responsibilities and capacities and the way forward for more effective coordination of roles, responsibilities, and resources to enhance synergy. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the successful implementation of the outcomes of this workshop is integral 
to the Sendai framework and the achievement of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Agenda 2063 of the African Union. To implement these agenda, we need to match the progress we have made in reducing loss of life from disasters by making similar advances in reducing the number of people affected with a well-coordinated system. Disasters are gateways to poverty and distress for many vulnerable people living in low and middle-income countries, including in the Gambia. Large-scale displacement increases migration flows. Reducing risks which accrue from rapid urbanization, poverty, and environmental deterioration and climate change is best achieved by avoiding the creation of these risks in the first place. We are all responsible and achieving the goals set out in the Agenda 2030 and 2063 depends on this. The United Nations system stands ready as always to support the efforts of the government and the people of the Gambia in addressing several challenges including global hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition, as well as the coordination and implementation of disaster risk reduction and management. The UN system's comparative advantage in disaster risk reduction and management is the result of decades of work with governments and food insecure communities to prepare for and respond to disasters, reduce disaster, disaster risk, and build resilience. The UN system's recognized expertise in food security related disaster risk reduction is based on one, food security and vulnerability analysis and early warning, which we do in very close collaboration with the government of the Gambia, emergency preparedness and response and recovery, which again we do very closely um, in collaboration with NDMA and uh, partners such as the Department of Agriculture. Resilience building and capacity development, again, done in very close collaboration with our government partners, as well as civil society partners, as well as interagency support and coordination. And again, in this, many of you in this room, uh, we actually work with um, on, on, on a constant basis. Lessons learned from various disaster incidents have highlighted the need to build the culture of prevention and to strengthen national capacities in disaster management, and particularly in utilizing disaster management tools for emergency needs assessments and information management during emergencies. This project is an opportunity for national and local governments, UN agencies, development partners, the private sector, community groups, and civil society organizations to promote best practices strengthen coordination and data collection for disaster risk management in the Gambia. The success of this project depends on sustainable engagement, coordination, and collaboration of multiple stakeholders to promote awareness of disaster prevention and the need to switch emphasis from managing disasters to managing disaster risk as outlined in the Sendai framework. In conclusion, I wish to express the UN's profound appreciation to the Office of the Vice President and the NDMA for the good work and collaboration, and by extension to the humanitarian organizations here present. I also want to take this opportunity to, to express our appreciation to the EU delegation for providing the, the financial resources for several DRR and emergency prepared, preparedness and response uh, initiatives in the Gambia. I thank you very much for your presence here and I wish you excellent deliberations. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman of the occasion. Your Excellency is present here from UNDP. FAO, ECOWAS, the representative of the Vice President and Chair of the Disaster Governing Council, representative from the 
European Union, the executive director of NDMA, governors present here from different regions, honorable members present here, um, international bodies present here, my brothers, and, my brothers and sisters, the civil society organizations present here, all other protocol respectfully observed. As was mentioned earlier, civil society works in partnership with government. And as a result, all civil society organizations registered in this country have signed a, a partnership agreement with ministries in this country. Reasons being that civil society organizations operate in different areas, in disaster management, in food security, in education, name them. So as a result, since our role as civil society is to support the development plans of the government of the day, so any action or any activity that is being planned or carried out by civil society has to be in tandem with a particular ministry either health or education. <clears throat> in this case here, today we're talking about DRR. We want to thank the executive director and his team for inviting us. Since before the inception of DMAR, CSOs have been involved with communities in disaster preparedness, in emergencies such as fire breakouts, floods, and so forth and so on. And we shall, we will continue to support those water causes. So, um, Executive Director, we are very pleased that you have engaged us in this, and we will assure you that the resources that we mobilize would go into supporting your programs. Civil society organizations also, as you are aware, 90% of our funding comes outside this country in the form of donor support. So most of the activities that we do are funded by those funding that came or that comes from the outside country. In that regard, I want to give you the assurance as the executive director of Tango and as representing the CSOs here, we would continue to work with you. We would continue to support your program and also, please don't hesitate to knock at our door at any appropriate time. I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Office of the Vice President, ably represented by Mrs. Gassama, NDMA Executive Director, Mr. De Harbour, ECOWAS Representative, Ambassador Mad Madame Kaifor, Resident Coordinator of the United Nations System, Dr. Kalala, uh, Director of Tango, Mr. Yarbo, WFP country representative, Madam Wanja, uh, civil society organizations, um, the governor of CRR, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Over recent decades, there's been a rising trend in the number and intensity of disasters. Here in the Gambia, disaster management is a national responsibility. The EU's role is to support and complement this process through implementing partners such as the World Bank, ECOWAS, FAO and WFP. 
This work is undertaken with the national bodies such as the National Disaster Management Agency, the Office of the Vice President, government agencies and ministries, and also very importantly by NGOs. This probably now may be the time uh, to reflect how to modernize and enhance policies and to cover the whole disaster cycle. This probably requires understanding further the risks we face here in the Gambia, making other policies perform better for disaster risk prevention, increasing investment in disaster resilience, improving coordination between the actors, and raising awareness to build a culture of prevention. Understanding the risk requires improving the knowledge base. The key issues here are information gaps, comparable, and also the lack of spatial information. For some hazards, a more comprehensive overview may be required. This could involve the inclusion of more events and uh, impacts, especially economic losses. Further spatial information is also required. Improved and standardized definitions and terminology for economic no losses and or damage costs affected people is needed. Making more data publicly accessible should also be a goal. More comprehensive and comparable and harmonized methodologies and data models is also considered very important. Understanding the risks also requires promoting risk assessments. Guidelines to help in this should focus on processes and methods and multi-risk assessments. Good practices and research and development results should also be applied. The DRR policy needs to be integrated and investments are required. In this vein, the integration of disaster risk reduction into government policies could include links to climate change adaptation. For example, the climate change policy of 2016 could be used in this process. There's also a requirement for disaster risk reduction integration into legislation. Environmental impact assessments, cross-border threats, etc. to health also have to be assessed. Prevention also becomes an important aspect to take into account and could include the increased use of disaster insurance policies and broadening <coughs> the scope of training. Here in the Gambia, the EU is already funding several initiatives in the area of disaster risk management through <coughs> ongoing work undertaken by the World Food Programme and the Food and Agricultural Organization under the 20.5 million euro project entitled Agriculture for Economic Growth and Food Security Nutrition to Mitigate Migration Flows. Under both their specific contracts, efforts are underway to help governments improve information gathering and dissemination on food security and nutrition. This includes early warning systems, improved statistics, improved market information systems, as well as the improved implementation of risk mitigation measures such as disaster risk reduction including climate change adaptation and resilience measures, disaster risk management, insurance tools, nutrition and social safety nets. More specifically, the WFP have been working closely with the UNDP, FAO and the National Development Management Agency, National Disaster Management Agency, to establish an early warning coordination system in the Gambia. WFP is focusing on establishment of early warning coordination to bring all relevant stakeholders together with a view to create a platform that will consolidate and disseminate early warning information to the vulnerable communities, as well as capacity augmentation of national institutions engaged in early warning activities. WFP is also currently supporting NDMA in the development of community, district, regional and national contingency plans through the joint work plan between the NDMA and WFP. With EU funding, WFP has supported the March 2018 Cadre Harmonise data collection and analysis, as well as the 2017 pre-harvest and post-harvest assessments. Mobility vulnerable assessment analysis and mapping, in particular with student volunteers from the University of the Gambia, have been carried out to measure food security vulnerability. VMVAM, as it's known, using mobile technology to collect and analyze food and nutrition security data faster, and more specifically in line with early warning systems has been used. As a next step, the WFP aims to include more partners in implementation of disaster risk reduction activities with EU funding. This will, amongst others, include organization of a training of trainers on contingency planning targeting NDMA regional structures and community-based organizations to streamline the role out of methodology 
Furthermore, there will be a feasibility study on micro-insurance, that's weather-based insurance, um, a joint consultation on mapping of early warning systems in the Gambia, and development of a road map uh, to establish an early warning coordination working group. Um, this is presently pending endorsement uh, at, by the Office of the Vice President. So with these events in the pipeline, the sense of today's workshop on national disaster management coordination is timely and useful, as it will help in the process of further enhancing national um, disaster risk management here in the Gambia. Thank you. I would say Alhamdulillah since the people of the Gambia have decided to come together and form a synergy in fighting disasters, in ensuring that disasters do not, do not affect our people anymore. We know we live with disasters. We must, we must have disaster, disasters, but we must be prepared so that when they come, we are ready to mitigate it. Thank you very much for coming together. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, I am here to represent His Excellency the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia. He could not be here today with you because he has very pressing official engagements that he has to attend personally, and that's why he could not be here today. But he has delegated me to be here and also apologize on his behalf. So I would read his statement as written. Um, the chairperson, the executive director of NDMA, and by extension the staff of NDMA, um, regional authorities here present. I recognize the presence of the governor of Sierra the National Assembly members here present, I can see some of them. Um, the representative of the ECOWAS, Madame Gayflo, representative of the um, European Union, Mr. Darrell, the Food and Agriculture representative, um, Madame Kalala, representative of the World Bank, representative of the UN agencies in the Gambia, the civil society organizations, the executive director, Tango. I also recognize the chair of the national team, Tang. He is here present. Um, distinguished participants, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I would like to welcome you on behalf of His Excel Excellency, the President of the Gambia, Adam Abaro, to this very important workshop on strengthening coordination mechanism for disaster management, mainly targeting members of the National Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction. I would also like to extend my appreciation to my appreciation as a government to the ECOWAS Commission we are also exceptionally thankful to the European Union for generously funding this capacity building workshop and uh, the continuous interest of the World Bank in the development affairs of our country is also cautiously acknowledged. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my understanding that the idea of establishing the National Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction in the Gambia was conceived by the ECOWAS Commission to enable its member states establish multi-sectoral groups to handle disaster risk reductions <coughs> in their countries in a more coherent and systematic manner. <coughs> I am also informed that the Gambia has been one of the few countries in 2011 that were chosen as a pilot for the establishment of the national platform. The aim was to strengthen the disaster management institutional framework through awareness raising among major actors or stakeholders, providing technical services to true preparation of disaster risk reduction programs 
and mobilizing resources among others. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as you may be aware, the Gambia is vulnerable to a range of natural and human-induced hazards. And since many events affect several parts of the country simultaneously, a national approach to managing the risk is appropriate and necessary. We are sure this is one of the essential premises on which this group of multisectoral experts was constituted to handle our disaster risk reduction issues. For instance, the situation of flooding as a result of climate change and its associated risk has increased in recent years. We as a nation are deeply affected by challenges such as unregulated settlement patterns, poor drainage systems, and a weak waste management structures and behaviors. These situations, if unchecked, are expected to significantly affect the country and increase risk related to health, fire, and agriculture and food security. Furthermore, the greater Banjo area has their own unique set of problems, consequences of climate change and environmental degradation, as well as rural urban drift, leading to unregulated settlements, increased waste, and poor drainage systems. All of these have left this area in danger of disaster and a high, high level sea rise could threaten most of the parts of KMC. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past years, since the establishment of the national platform, the Gambia has made great achievements on the area of DRR. Most, most specifically, the platform has provided the opportunity for various stakeholders, including the National Disaster Management Council and the National Disaster Management Agency, to bring into focus the facts that disasters are part of our everyday existence. It, is also allow, it also allows us the opportunity to identify and strengthen synergies that exist among stakeholders in the planning, preparation, mitigation, recovery, and rehabilitation efforts required in dealing with some of the potential hazards we are faced with. This said, we must, however, critically remind ourselves of our challenges, um, of our challenges, sorry, remind ourselves that our challenges are many and there is no sadness to accept that. More than ever before, we are obliged by our citizens and our oath of office to work together in the most professional and selfless manner to ensure that we improve the socio-economic development and environmental sustainability agenda of our dear nation. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I am informed that currently coordination of disaster management is the most challenging issue facing national, the National Disaster Management Agency. This is partly because of the transfer of the institution from one time the office of the vice president to the office of the president at some point. This crippled communication and its strategic management brought into a conflict of interest and competition over its mandate, among other factors. We will work as a government to change this situation. It is important to note that we cannot continue to prioritize disaster responses more than risk, disaster risk reduction through coherent and evidence-based preparatory measures. This said, it is my belief that the training is not only timely, but it is indeed smart and well designed. I implore all of you to work together during this entire period of the workshop to debate and agree on the best possible coordination mechanism that will enable NDME to be in the forefront in the execution of its functions in the most transparent, responsible, and accountable way. This will avoid a case where individuals and institutions will contribute to disaster reduction or resilience building, but in a rather inappropriate way, even when such actions actually are good-willed. 
to our supporters and our partners from the ECOWAS, the World Bank, and the EU. It is my expectation that you will be involved in the very in very interesting discussions here on the strengths and weaknesses of the national coordination architecture and support systems to subsequently agree on a robust coordination framework to improve the coordination capacity of the NDME, including awareness raising on rules and functions of the different government sectors, harnessing partnership, improving resource mobilization, for risk financing and improving, improvement of the disaster data management for decision making. Respectfully, I am reminding this gathering that the achievement of the goal of the National Development Plan, the Sustainable Development Goals, and the Sandai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction and the African Agenda 2063 requires dynamic leadership, smart investment in disaster management. It is indeed factual to mention that none of these development priorities are achievable without a re realistic investment on risk reduction and mainstreaming disaster management in all development policies and programs at all levels. This said, I am enticed to mention that my executive director of the NDMA and his entire staff and collaborators are also speaking and acting in this perspective. We as an institution must be prepared to act according to the best interest of the people we serve, and more than ever before, we must be transparent and accountable to the most vulnerable and at all levels. This is because disaster risk governance cannot be business as usual, and there is more than necessary reason to improve our coordination practices to make disaster risk reduction an important pillar for sustainable development. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me express the political will of the government under the leadership of His Excellency, President Adam Abaro, to support the national platform and the National Disaster Management Agency, in, a, in particular to achieve the agenda on disaster risk reduction in line with the national, regional, and international frameworks. This, in this regard, the government of the Gambia will encourage a proactive approach to disaster management. This has been one of the fundamental reasons why the NDMA, under the new government, is responsible, is repositioned <laughs> under the office of the vice president to ensure efficiency and effectiveness in service delivery through a reduced bureaucratic procedure and unnecessary pro protracted actions on emergency and disaster situations. Furthermore, it, I will emphasize that we have recognized the importance of the ECOWAS plan of action, and that is why we want to improve and strengthen our coordination through a smart, sustainable, non-bureaucratic and people-centered framework so that any AMA is recognized as the rightful government agency responsible for coordination of all disasters and related matters. Therefore, all matters of early warning, preparations, response, and recovery must be spearheaded by the NDMA, by the principles of the law that created the agency. In, a, in conclusion, Mr. Chair, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to state that the government of the Gambia and the people of the Gambia have indeed recognized and appreciated the various technical and financial support rendered by ECOWAS, the World Bank, and other players like the EU to the Gambia since the establishment of the platform for disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. In this regard, on behalf of the President of the Republic of the Gambia and the entire nation, I would conclude by thanking our generous and committed partners and all, all the participants to fully take part in this training. On behalf of His Excellency the Vice President, I thank you all for your kind attention.